it's me again. Um, I have got to tell you I have been working on the mystery quilt for like all day today doing the files and stuff getting all the templates ready and all this stuff for y'all and I am just like cross-eyed. <laughs> so I thought I'd hop on here and do some more just general sewing on my uh, bookshelf quilt just to take my mind off of the mystery quilt. Um, if you don't know about the mystery quilt, it starts, uh, the quilt along starts on um, St. Patrick's Day, this Wednesday, and um, I think we're due for tornado weather, so I'm going to try to get it done earlier in the morning on Wednesday, um, but we'll see. Uh, I'll get it up as soon as I can. Um, I'm so excited. I think it's going to be great. I, I'm thrilled. Um, I was like, not sure and then excited and not sure and I went back and forth like I always do with everything that I do and finally I have arrived at the point where I think it's it's going to be really good so you guys join and watch and um, have fun I can't wait to see what you make so anyway today I just thought I'd do some of my books for my bookshelf quilt um, so I, I did the last several blocks paper pieced and um, this this part I'm doing with the books, I decided to do to see if I could do it without um, doing the paper piecing. So I, I picked a different technique. And the lady I was following her tutorial, um, and it was from like 2015, <laughs> a long time ago. So the website's not even up anymore. So I can't really show you where to go to get it. But anyway, I'll show you how to do it. So um, let's see, let's go there. Okay, so these are the ones I've put together so far. What I did was I uh, embroidered the names of my books on strips of fabric. And I'll show you how, to did, how I did that in just a second. If you don't have the ability to embroider, that's fine. Just um, write the names on there. Of course, you'd have to have a lighter book spine to do that. But this is how they're going to look on the shelf, you know, standing up. You can't really see that. Let me just show it up here. Thanks. Like that. Okay. Um, so anyway, so the way I did the embroidery was um, I had strips of scrap fabric, but I can't really put the scraps in my embroidery hoop because they're strips. So um, I got a piece of, of just plain muslin and I used some uh, feasible web uh, wonder under um, and I uh, ironed the strips to the muslin and I was able to do actually three at a time. Um, and I took it over to my embroidery machine and I put the the names. Aren't those fun? Toadstool Tales. These names of these books I actually got from the um, Project of Doom that I mentioned before in one of my other videos. Um, and you can find them on Facebook and you can find the, uh, the website. Um, and it has all the patterns are free for all the um, Harry Potter bookshelf items. Um, so you can get them there. I put that information in the description below. Uh, so be sure and check that out. Um, I have not shown these, I don't think, but these are also on that Project of Doom thing. Um, this is the cauldron that I made. Isn't that fun? And then, uh, then I made a spider. Ooh wow, you can't really see behind him. Okay. Uh, can you see that? Let's see, I'll show it down here. There he is. I paper pieced this. Most of the patterns on there, I think all of them actually, are paper pieced. This is a spider. This is my shelf fabric, so he's kind of hanging over the shelf there. Arr. And the legs are fuzzy. <laughs> fuzzy fabric. So anyway, so I made those two. And um, back to the blocks, uh, the books. Okay, so... To make these right here that I did, okay, um, I cut these apart, so I'll do that. These strips, cut them apart. Ah, somebody's watching. Who's watching? Say hi. Probably my husband. <laughs> Let's 
started by cutting these all apart and then So see, these are the little books there. Okay. Take the rest of them cut apart real quick here. The um, Facebook was where I got the Project of Doom, was where I got the title book titles, and they were already done for me in um, file format for my embroidery machine, which was really awesome. I didn't have to do anything. And I like that the font on each book is different. Because when I first started doing this, the first thing I was going to do was just make make all my books. You know, just do the embroidery files myself. But then the font would have been the same. So, okay. I'll turn these around. Shave them off here. Okay. So, see I left the top and the bottom uh, muslin on here, so I'll cut that next. Okay, so the books are different heights, of course, because, you know, you don't have a shelf unless it's an encyclopedia set. Huh. Anybody remember those? Um, they're not all the same height, so I thought, well, instead of just trying to wing it, I would do a um, half inch on top and bottom. That would give me a quarter of an inch. No, three quarters, sorry. Um, I measured three quarter of an inch from the top, uh, from the edge of my stitching. Okay. And then, and then I cut it. Okay. And so that's what made them different sizes. But they all still, the, the words are all still centered. So three quarters of an inch on top and bottom I cut off. Make sure it's square. Can't really see the writing on this one. Okay. And then you have to decide which way is up on your books. It's kind of the something you don't think about. Um, but because these are titled up and down the spine, you have to figure out whether you want them to go, whether you want them to go this way or this way. I suppose it, if you're left or right-handed, it would make a difference. I don't know. But I decided to make mine this way. So this one will be here. See how they're different sizes? Okay, so from that point, what I did was I at the top. Okay, so this one goes this way. Okay, all right. So they're all going from the bottom to the top. That's how I'm going to read them. So on the top, I did you take this strip of fabric, the same width as what you got of your shelf, of your background fabric, not your shelf fabric. And you stitch it to the top. Okay. Okay. So then you have like that. There's fuzzy stuff everywhere. Okay. Then what they say to do is to stitch them all together and, whoa, destructo. Okay, they say in this file to stitch them all together and then just take your ruler and cut them off at the top, all even. That's fine, you could do that. Um, I decided that I wanted this block to be 10 and a half unfinished, tall, so 10 finished. So I decided to just go ahead and cut these ten and a half and then sew them together. So that's what I did. Ten and a half. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to sew that one there. And it's actually going to be the same size as that one, same height. So I suppose I could put a shorter one in between. Let's do this one. short. So since I'm not doing, um, I'm not necessarily doing Harry Potter themed, I'm doing more of a witch's thing. Um, I went through the file names and took out the ones I didn't want to use that had specifically to do with Harry Potter. So that's all right. I'm just finger pressing these and then I'm going to take them over to the ironing board and press them all down. So, like that. Okay. So, the way they said to do it is to stitch it, and I'll do that. Why not? Never hurts to try something different. All right. Thing, the reason I measured instead of doing it this way is because this, you, could, you can tend to stretch out your fabrics doing it this way if you don't have an exact, if you're not sewing an exact measurement together. Um, so that can cause problems. Um, so just don't stretch your fabric. Okay, so what they said to do was, let me see this, lay it out like this. Where is this over there? And then just cut off the top, which makes sense, you know. Anyway, there's my books. Oh, they look pretty good. Ah, how about that? Okay, and then I'll put the purple one here. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Okay, I'll just go ahead and show that one. If you're watching right now, get on to chat and say hi. I'd love to see who's watching. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I am pressing these. Uh, I am pressing these all to the background fabric so that when I sew them I'm sewing from the bottom this way and that that leaves these down and I could sew over them instead of trying to keep push them down when I sew so there that is so cool check out my books <laughs> okay so the one other thing and I wanted to try this I'll do it with this book right here is they said to take a piece of fabric, okay, taller than your block. That is not the piece of fabric I was going to use, is it? I guess it is. Block may be shorter than I thought. Okay, and if you want a book that's leaning like this, right, they said to cut diagonal here and sew the two pieces to the sides of your book, right? And I was thinking about it and I was like, okay, well, but there will be missing stuff up here. So I'm gonna sew the strips on the ends like I did on the straight up and down books, and then I'm gonna put it in there and we'll see what happens. I don't know. If 
I mess it up, then you can go, oh, that's what you don't do. <laughs> Let's see. How do I want to do this? I'll make this a taller book. In this case, I'm going to have to put the strip on the bottom and the top, right? So, here we go. give myself plenty of space here and just cut the strip in half. So the other side. Let's see, is everything working up there? I'm still recording, right? Oh. <laughs> So now it said to cut this in half, I mean cut diagonal. So we'll do that. Then we're working with bias, which is always fun. should go in here, right? But we want to make sure that it goes at the bottom because this corner needs to be resting on the bottom, right? On the shelf. Okay. So we'll leave ourselves a quarter of an inch down here. You can always cut off the bottom, I suppose. Probably be the more intelligent thing to do. Okay. This time I'm pinning because it's on bias and I want to be real careful with it. Come on. Okay. Okay, here we go. Well, that doesn't look too bad. Not a disaster. That's cool. Alright. Okay, so this one can actually go a little higher, right? Because it doesn't need to be down here. So we just need to make sure um, we have a quarter of an inch on this side and a quarter of an inch on this side, right? So you need to come in to like there, if that makes sense. At least that's what I think. Okay. 
cross your fingers. Here we go. I did the pen that side. Hmm. All right. So there are the blocks back together. Right. Oh, okay. And I don't want to push on this too much. I'm going to do it with the iron here in a minute. Okay. And then so that would go. On the bookshelf next to this. Oh, look at that, isn't that cool? <laughs> okay, so, so I want to cut my bottom part first, I think. So I'm going to take a square, square it up. And I left, can you see this? I left a quarter of an inch here um, because that's going to be sewn by the shelf fabric. So I want to make sure that that stays there. And um, okay, got that off there. Go away, go away, go away. Okay. All right. And then that's going to be sewn onto there, and it just barely makes it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this on, and then I'm going to go over there and press it and cut it. Right, turn my iron on. Hang on. Gonna go for a ride. Okay. I have a really neat thing on my cutting board I want to show you too that um, that I did a while back. It is really neat and it's really inexpensive to do, and it's. One of those little tricks that's really helpful. Okay. Ready? Here we go. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so let's go over to the iron, which is probably not heated yet. Uh, so, but we'll try. Okay, here we go. Is that not the coolest thing? All right. Now, the, the iron, iron that, that I use, in case you're interested, is a gravity feed steam iron. Kind of like the kind you see in, um, well, it is the kind you see in the dry cleaners. Um, it doesn't have a water chamber on the iron itself. The water chamber is hanging up there on the ceiling, close to the ceiling. And uh, it does great steam. And it lasts a long, long time. I got tired of the domestic irons and I was like, uh-uh, no more. Oh, what do you think of that? That's pretty cool. Okay. Now, let's go over to see if I can change this view here to the next spot. Okay. Now, this, this is what I want to show you before I put this on the cutting board. Um, hopefully you can see this. Uh, 
this, this is, is my cutting mat. mat. It's, it's, it's large. It's, it's what, 45, 46 wide by two feet deep. Um, but what I did was I went to Home Depot. Um, you can get it at Lowe's or wherever. But I got a piece of sheet metal. It's extremely thin. Um, and I put it underneath. Well, actually, there's two pieces under here. And they're taped together. Okay. And what this does is I made myself some magnets that stick. So when I'm cutting out patterns for, um, for quilts, for clothing, whatever, I can magnet, I can stick them down with magnets and cut around them. Just like that. It's great. Isn't that great? And the uh, sheet metal is really inexpensive. So, so are the magnets, magnets for that matter. So, handy tip of the day. Okay. So we're going to cut this guy. Let's square it up. Now I have also wanted to tell you about um, my rulers. Uh, for many, many years, I used these rulers, the Omnigrid, right? Everybody's seen those. I used those for years, like a long, long time. Um, and recently, I have tried to start switching over to these. These are creative grids, and I like them because they have this um, sandpaper kind of feel to the back edges here. So they you put it on your fabric and your fabric won't move, which is awesome. Um, and then I do have, of course, some Missouri Star um, rulers too. So uh, those are the rulers I like. In case you were interested. Let's see. How do I want to do this? Let's, I'm going to get a bigger ruler. I have rulers at my ears here, people. Okay. Yeah, that's big enough. Okay. So, like I said, I wanted this to be a ten and a half inch. So, I'm going to square up on this edge and this bottom edge. Um, ten and a half. Like that. Just make it that way. And there we go. All right. I have books for my bookshelf. <laughs> also, I keep lint roller handy. Always. Well, that's thread. So excited. Awesome. Okay, so I have toadstool tales, 15th century fiends, sites of historical sorcery, famous fire eaters, sonnets of a sorcerer, and magical drafts and potions. And I'll probably be making several more um, to scatter on my bookshelf. So there you have it. I was going to make the plant today, but I think I've run out of time. Um, I'll, ma I'll make the plant next time. It's kind of like a like a Venus flytrap kind of plant thing. So anyway, I am back over here. Hello, hello. There you are. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. I did. It was nice to get away from the computer for a little while. Um, don't forget to 
join the Facebook group, the Scrap Quilting Facebook group. Um, that is where we were having the mystery quilt. And it starts next week on Wednesday. And I will be releasing all the clues on YouTube uh, first. And then I will follow up with uh, if there's templates or anything that you need like that, I will follow up with that on my blog so you can download those uh, to use them. Um, but yeah, and uh, please subscribe to my channel. I really, really like to see that people are watching and I hope I'm helping somebody learn a few things. Um, so yeah, so thanks for joining. I'll see you next time.